Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a brand new season of tutorials here on YouTube. This season I'm doing watercolour tutorials that are all inspired by the shoreline, so by the coasts of Scotland and Northern England. And today I'm going to be painting a seascape. And this is, a, this is based on a photo that I took from on the Isle of Skye uh, when I was there visiting. And I'll put a link to the photograph in the description if you want to follow along. Today I thought it'd be really fun to do a painting that's only using three colours. So I've picked a palette of primary colours and the ones that I'm using are Quinacridone Magenta, Windsor Yellow and Windsor Blue Red Shade. Now you can pick like lots of different versions of red, yellow and blue as your primaries. I prefer one that's got a magenta or a kind of pinky toned red shade because I think it gives you more options, it can give you like brighter, fresher colours and there's more range of purples there. So obviously you've got the three colours that as they come fresh out of the tube or out of the pan, but you can also mix them and if you mix your blue and yellow together you get a green. If you mix a yellow and a magenta together you can either get like a really bright red or you can get a, like an orangey red and if you mix your magenta and your blue you get a whole range of different kind of purpley violety tones. But the really interesting stuff happens when you start mixing three colours together and I'm just having a little play on my sketchbook at the minute and just randomly mixing three of these colours together in different ratios. So if I've got more blue I end up with more of a, a bluey tone if I've got more of the yellow and the magenta but only a little bit of the blue I end up with more of a brown and a little bit more yellow I can get more of an olive green. In fact I filled a whole sketchbook page with different mixes of these three colours and I really recommend that if you're thinking about using a really limited palette. Today I'm going to be working on this cotton cold pressed watercolour paper and all the supplies will be linked in the description box below. I'm going to be using mostly a flat brush, uh, Pro Art call this a one stroke brush and mine's three quarters of an inch and then I've got a slightly smaller brush, um, I think it's a size 10 uh, Princeton Neptune pointed round brush just for the smaller details. I've got some clean water and a paper towel I've got a couple of things off to the side that I'm going to be reaching for. I've got a pencil and a kneadable eraser. I've got some masking fluid, which I'm going to be using. If you don't have masking fluid, you could use some opaque white paint instead and add it at the end. I've got some masking tape and I'm going to tape the edges of my paper. I don't need to because it's on a block, so it's already nice and stretched and flat, but I really want that kind of nice crisp white border around everything. So that's the only reason I'm using the tape. If I stick it to my table before I stick it to the paper, it just takes a little bit of the, the stick off it. Not too much, but just enough so that I'm not in any danger of ripping the paper. And I'm going to start sketching. Now I've used a ruler for that horizontal line, but I didn't really need to. And I'm just putting in the big shapes. So big areas of triangles, kind of rough rectangles for all of these, um, like the headlands stretching off into the distance. So I put them in really lightly to start with. And then when I'm a little bit more confident about the placement, I start going in a little bit heavier and I'm kind of jerking my pencil around to give me some of the kind of the rough random shapes that you get from rocks. It's not going to look exactly like the picture, but as long as it looks kind of rugged and coastline-y and natural, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to put in some random kind of rectangly style shapes for some of these rocks in the foreground. and just spend a little time kind of refining things and making sure everything's in the right position. When I'm happy with everything, I can go over everything with my kneaded eraser. That helps me remove any of the lines that, I, that are completely in the wrong place. But it means that I can also go over the lines that uh, are a little uh, too dark and just lighten them up a bit. Now I'm taking that masking fluid 
and I've got a brush that I use with the masking fluid that's very old and I don't mind that if it gets a bit gummed up. If I do wash it straight afterwards it'll be absolutely fine but if it you know if I get some of the the gummy rubbery masking fluid in it it doesn't really matter. I'm just painting it to the right of these little rocks and just along a few dots along the beach and along the shore, um, the headland, where the uh, where the frothy waves are breaking, and then yeah, just squidge out any remaining gunk that's in there. I'm going to start by painting the sky, and when I took this photo, it was a really interesting time of day. It was quite late on; it wasn't quite sunset, but there was just like a tinge to the sky. And it was a little bit like, you know, when you get dark clouds overhead, but there's still sunlight coming from somewhere and you get a kind of weird light. Well, I'm going to try and capture that on this uh, on this painting. So I want a kind of sky that's got lots of kind of warmth and purple in it, especially at the top. And then that's going to contrast with some of the kind of the limey green of the grass below. I'm going to be painting the sky wet in wet. So I've coated the whole thing with clean water, just evenly, just a nice even wash of water. Now I find that this technique works better on cotton paper for me. Uh, I find that the water kind of sinks into the paper a little bit and just stays wet a little bit longer. And now I'm going to start mixing my colours. I do want that kind of purpley tinge in the sky, so I know that if I mix my magenta into my blue, I'm going to get lots of lovely mauvey purpley colours but they're going to be a little bit much on their own. So if I mix a little bit of the yellow in there, then that just, it just softens it a little bit. I like mixing these puddles on my palette and allowing the colours to kind of gently flow into one another. It means I can put my brush down into different areas of colour and come away with something slightly different each time. Now I want the sky to be purple at the top, slightly bluer and maybe a little bit lighter in the middle and then maybe even more that kind of greeny sea blue colour towards the bottom. So I'll add in a little bit more yellow into my blue for those bits closer to the shoreline. Now the water is going to spread my paint out. So I don't need to worry too much about getting it kind of looking neat and clean and tidy, but I'm just kind of painting swooshes across it. And the colours will blend and they will be a little bit lighter when they dry than when I've put them in. So I can go a little bit darker than I originally intended as well. So start out quite light and then just keep adding colour until I'm happy with it. When you're totally happy with the sky, you can go on and paint the next bit. But I don't want to paint any of the, the hills that are directly touching the sky because it is still a little bit, little bit wet and I don't want to bleed green into my sky. So I'm going to paint the foreground and it's this really lovely lemony limey green uh, right where the sun kind of catches the edge of the, the hill there. So I'm using mostly yellow with just a hint of the blue. In fact I really just mixed some yellow into the edge of the kind of puddle of bluey purpley colour that I've got on my palette and that's giving me quite a fresh green. Adding a little bit more blue into that is going to give me more of a medium green. And if I feel that's too bright, I can add some of that purple that's sitting on the palette or some of the magenta from the from the pan and just kind of dull it down a little bit. I definitely want it darker and more bluey close to me. So a bit more pigment and a little bit more kind of mixing of those three colours together. I 
And while this area is still wet, I can just keep on working at it until I'm happy with it. Now both these areas are completely dry, I can paint the sea. And obviously I want the sea to be blue, but it's not just blue. Actually, I think I want to paint it a little bit brighter than it is on the, on the photo. And I'm going to start with a kind of a light greeny blue at the top by adding in a little bit of yellow to that colour. And then I'm going to make it warmer, uh, a warmer blue as it gets closer to me. So I'll be adding in more of that pure Windsor blue. I want the, uh, the bit right on the horizon line just to be a little bit paler and softer. So I'm just taking some of the colour off my brush to paint that bit. So as I'm painting in these little bits near the beach and the rocks, I'm trying to leave some white spaces where the rocks are, but where I've put the masking fluid, I can just paint straight over it. And as we're painting the sea closer to us, I'm adding just a little bit more pigment and a little bit more of the blue. Now it's really good to work quickly when you're painting a kind of a big area like this. And what you'll notice is that the area that I painted at the top has started to dry a little bit. And so in order to kind of help it all be nice and even, I'm just going over it again with another layer of uh, not too wet paint, but just a little bit more paint on my brush. I was struggling to get my big brush to paint a nice clean line along the, uh, the edge here, so I switched to a slightly smaller brush. That does leave a little bit of a dark line of that uh, darker blue towards the bottom, and that is kind of bleeding into the slightly drier layer further up. So again, what I can do is I can take my brush and just wet that whole layer again. And because it's still damp, it'll spread out nice and, and cleanly. Now I want to paint the hills. And the hills are a really interesting mix of kind of bare rock and grassy areas. But I don't want any kind of harsh lines in there. So I'm mixing up on my palette. On my right hand side, I've got pretty much pure yellow. In the middle, I've got a green, which is a mix of the yellow and the blue. And then on the right, I'm mixing up a kind of neutral color by mixing an equal amount of each of my three primaries together. And I start painting that in. And actually I decide that I'd rather like to reflect some more of the purple from the sky in these rocks. So I add a little bit more of the magenta into that mix and I create, it's still a kind of neutral dark colour, but it's got much more of that kind of purpley mauvey tone in it. And I'm painting this whole area on the left and I'm just going to fill it in with kind of dabs of different colours to kind of give that sense of it being kind of a bit rocky and rugged. So I paint some areas with the kind of the rocky colour and then I'm going to go in with my mid green and join some of those areas together. And then where there are real highlights where you can kind of see the sun shining and where there's like some nice grassy bits, I'm going in pretty much straight with that yellow. And then I just allow those colours to blend on the page.
Taking my smaller brush, and again with that kind of mauve neutral mix, I'm going to go over all of the rocks. For the minute, I'm just painting them in all one solid colour. Now I'm mixing up the same colour but just a little bit more concentrated and I'm just putting a few little dabs of that colour right at the base of the rocks where they're kind of really dark up against the water. I paint the second uh, kind of headland in exactly the same way it's got like a ridge of grass along the top and then some kind of rocky cliffy bits. And I'm just kind of dabbing some random colours, some pale green, some mid green, and then quite a bit of that kind of rocky colour. I'm going to leave the third headland for a minute because I'm going to paint the, uh, the bit right at the end um, so that I can let those two dry and then paint the bit in the middle. The one right in the distance is actually much more of a kind of slaty blue. So that's again a mix of the three different colours but a lot more of the blue in it this time. And I've painted it all in with my little fine brush. So I, I knew that the paint was a little bit too dark but I'm painted it in any way and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it a little bit so just take some paper towel and dab at it and I'll just make it a lot softer the third headland in the distance I'm going to do it in the same way again but I'm adding a little bit more blue into my mix uh, of the kind of neutral colour that's because as uh, things recede into the distance, they look kind of cooler in tone. So if a few more of the bluey greens and more of a kind of bluey shade, a bluey slaty shade on the rocks rather than a purpley brown. will just give that a sense of it looking a little bit further away. Now we're nearly finished here, and we could be finished if you want to be, but I'm just going to add a little bit more detail. I want to add an effect to the sea because it looks kind of quite rough on the picture and it has a different texture to the hills and I want to get that sense. So I'm using the side of my brush and dragging it backwards and forwards. I'm practicing a little bit first on a bit of scrap paper and I decide that the, the brush that I had been using was a little bit too soft and a harder, more stiffer brush would be better. So I've switched to uh, another brush, which is still a synthetic brush, but uh, it's, it's got a little bit more snap to it. This is the Raphael Precision brush. And I'm really using it totally on its side. I'm not using the point of it at all. And I've mixed up a little bit of yellow into my blue to give me a kind of a sea green colour and we're just very gently touching the paper and because it's cold pressed paper it's got some kind of texture to it and where the brush is hitting the raised bits of the paper I'm getting a little bit of a kind of like that rough dark, dry brush effect. I'm also adding a little bit more detail to the rocks and I'm just dabbing really with my uh, flat brush 
some horizontal lines to kind of show the the kind of the nature of the rock as it kind of it's like in layers and some darker areas to look like kind of shadow I've done that on the uh, the middle headland and I'm doing it on the one closest to me as well Now when I started this, I've, the first line that I put in was slightly at the wrong angle so I've just gone with it but um, if I did it again I'd probably try and make sure that those lines were a bit flatter and a bit more horizontal. Final thing to do is to remove the masking fluid once everything's completely dry. I'm very good at not being patient enough to wait and smudging it. So take your time and be patient. I'm just using a clean finger to rub that off, but I found quite a hard eraser works really well as well if, you get, if you're struggling. And then there were a few areas where I felt there was just a little bit too much white. So again, I've mixed some of that greeny blue sea color and I'm just dotting in those areas, just to break up some of those white bits a little bit. So that is my sky seascape painted with three colors. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. If you want to paint along with me, then I'll put the reference image and also uh, some line work on my website that you can download. There'll be a link to that in the description box. If you give this project a go, I'd love to see it. Uh, you can post it on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. Um, I do love seeing what you've made and thank you for uh, those of you who tag me in your photos. If you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from me, then please subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.